it's episode one 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 of the Power Pod. Oh, deconstructing the welcome to episode of one 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 Power Pod. What does one mean to you? What does one mean to me? It means I am. <laughs> I am. What? What are you? What I does one mean? One zero. One zero. The binary. Uh, one means my name is Owen, and zero means you are. Oh, Mark. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not very good at maths. <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode 111. I think I might have said tr- four ones there. Of the Paro <laughs> Pod. <laughs> episode 1101. Oh my God, we're going to be old as shit when we get to that number. I also, I got that wrong. Uh, 1000. Oh, fuck it, no, forget it. 1111. <laughs> It's been two weeks. It has. We've already lost the the run of ourselves, and we're not even. Oh no, we are a minute in, so that's pretty good. We're a minute, <laughs> only, <laughs> only a minute Jeez. in. Jeez, oh, thank God. This week we are talking about Daisy's 1966 new wave Czech, no Czechoslovakian Czech film. Czechoslovakia. Yeah. Uh, a part of the Czech new wave it's an experimental feminist film. Um, spoilers. It's pretty weird. It's, it's pretty good, though. It's pretty, it's pretty strange. <laughs> pretty strange, but that's for later on. Mm. How have you been, Mark? I've been I've been good. I've been all right. Um, the last two weeks is a total blur. Total, yeah. total blur. Yeah, I, honestly, no. I couldn't tell you what happened in the last two weeks. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I didn't do much, though. Didn't do a lot. Didn't do anything groundbreaking. Um, the Well, not that I can think of right now. Anything interesting happening in your life? I got a tattoo and I um went walking alpacas. What? <laughs> every week you show me up. Yeah. Every single week. Every week I do you something. Just remind me of how boring my life is. <laughs> <laughs> no, the tattoo is just like out of voucher, so it's just time to time to get this this on. It looks very nice. It's already healed as well. It's yeah. Mo- I think it's yeah. It's healed at this stage. It's still like flaking a little bit, but yeah. it's basically healed. I at can't this believe stage. you got a tattoo of that though in that place. It's like. <laughs> Is that legal? Can't believe you got that symbol tattooed yeah. on your face. Like, <laughs> were you locked? <laughs> Everyone can see that, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that symbol, man. You know what that's associated with? Yeah, that's questionable. <laughs> oh, it's, a do- it's death grips. It's very nice. Yeah, it's a very nice tattoo. Album cover. Um, the um, mom is so not happy about it. <laughs> no. Because it's essentially a gimp mask, so she's not very happy about it, but... Uh, it's on the. It's above the knee, so you can't see it. It's above the knee, yeah. That's that's. Lewd. The only thing now is that I gotta wear shorts for the rest of my life, no matter the weather, so everyone can see it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, above, like that's that's lewd territory. You know, that's that's fine. Like, why are you staring at? Uh, uh, They've it's got it on like, your arm. Fair enough. Yeah, no, it's because um, I was talking to people that just like, oh, what did you get on your arm? I was like, I don't want that on my arm. I want mm. that on my leg. Yeah, get, get get the other Death Grips album cover or tattoo on your arm. Yeah, <laughs> the dick Uncensored. one. Uncensored. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's an album cover. It's an album cover. It's cool. <laughs> Imagine just. Do you say there's definitely someone that has like their favorite artists, all their album covers tattooed? Ah, definitely. Yeah. Well, okay. Which person's discography, like just based on album artwork, mm. would you think would be the worst to get tattooed on yourself? The worst. Um, My immediate thought is Bob Dylan because every single album cover is just him, isn't it? It's just him, yeah. It's just him. It's just his face. In different styles. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. different ages. <laughs> yeah, that'd be hard to kind of uh, translate onto. It's just onto just a body. montage of. <laughs> you get the one, um, what's it? Uh, uh, the, oh, I've got a, the basement tapes. There's one that's just like, it's like a, it's a really like, um, crude drawing of his face you know you just get that but it looks like a child really you know you just get that on your chest or something or on your forehead it's like it's bob dylan man it's <laughs> bob dylan it's like how'd you not know come on man and bob dylan fans come up to you be like wow wow love your bob commitment. dylan fans would be you know sucking you off just to see it but yeah 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 um but um yeah i don't know yeah, album covers i'm sure i'm sure there's, there's, there's many out there you know beatles would be a fucking pain though just for uh sergeant yeah. pepper <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just the, for that one the detail. Yeah, a revolver. You get all those freaky faces, just like tattooed all over your body. Just the white, the just white. The, yeah, the white. <laughs> <album>. yeah. <laughs> I already got that. Man. <laughs> I got that all over. Um, I'm trying to think of other people's. I'm trying to think of someone that's got like 
a massive discography as well. Like Bob Dylan, the problem with Bob Dylan as well is that he's he's got loads of albums as well. He has. He actually has too many albums. He has far too many albums. <laughs> um, Kanye West. Jesus, yeah. You get you get quite a bit of mileage out of that. You would. But there's also quite. It's kind of fairly innocent. Mm. Well, except for that one. But like what one? Well, like I can't remember what it's called. Like, it's, it's just two people riding on the front. But it's like it's like a painting. It's very small. Oh yeah, no. my beautiful yeah, yeah, twisted dark, dark fancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's. I, mean, I forgot about that. Right, one. H- what about uh, early nineties Latino rap? <laughs> ever see or like uh, just rap in general? No. Did, did you ever see those like the album covers? They're all like they're all really low quality. Look, oh look yeah, they're, they're made in MS real. Paint. They're, they're yeah, just yeah. like the, like the the. Uh, the rapper just on... <laughs> it's like a shitty fucking Microsoft uh, like yeah, the yeah. images. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they'd be good. Another way. Yeah, that, yeah they're always really low quality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They literally, they literally made it on a fucking word processor, like, you know. Ed Sheeran's albums. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That'd be reasonable, yeah. But no, it's, it's a plus that just has his face on it as well. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. That, that big moon head <laughs> just tattooed in your back. You and know. you have to get him coloured as well. It has to be coloured in. You ever see his tattoos? No. He's got... Awful tattoos. Does he? Or what? Yeah, he just looks like someone doodled all over him. Mm. Mm. That's fairly common. Fairly certain he's got like, like a Heinz ketchup bottle or something tattooed onto him. That's so random, mm. man. Cool. That's so cool, bro. Man, you're such an artist. You're staring at the bars. <laughs> I bet you, but uh, you know, see my tattoo. It's like, it's like that kind of guy, and then uh, he just shows, it and everyone's like, "Oh, all right." It's like, oh, cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. What age are we? <laughs> but um. Yeah, no, I didn't do anything new. Wait, wait, wait what about the alpacas? Yeah, the alpacas. We didn't <laughs> even get to that. <laughs> yeah, no, we um, went off uh, last Saturday and went to... Peru. Um, yeah, went off to Peru. <laughs> uh, we were in Wicklow and K-12 alpaca place. It's actually just... They just give you an alpaca and you just go on a little walk. Like, it says, like, two hours. It's not two hours. It's, like, an hour. And uh, maybe it's two hours because sometimes the alpacas can apparently take fucking ages to get them to go walk out of their pen but i had um banda was my one. Oh, she's a lovely girl i'll show you a photo of her um they're v- unbelievably docile creatures though my mm. god um yeah, she just, is. just vibe ah uh, the, yeah they're real cute ah uh, just a lot smaller than i thought they're a lot smaller like i hope i'm picking that up see they're like they're a lot smaller than you think they'd be um He's just vibing. Just vibing, just chilling. Oh, look at your man. Ed yeah. Sheeran in the background. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one that Melissa had. Ah, But like, image. <laughs> <laughs> the ginger alpaca. Sweet ginger. <laughs> That's so funny. But, um, no, yeah, they're like, they're mad chill, Um, but... Their there vibe's was, off. Their vibe is a bit <laughs> weird because they're kind of unpredictable. I don't know if it's just that, like, you know, I've never really spent a lot of time around alpacas. Yeah. I'm just like staring. I was like, I feel like you're going to do something to me. I feel like you're going to spit at me at any second. Did they? Nope. Did they spit off? They One of them spat vaguely at me, but she was three years old and I was petting her. And then she was like walking away. And I was like, no, come here. And went, <laughs> <laughs> but it's mostly air, apparently. It's like they just blow at you. Oh, really? They don't actually spit. I think lamb is proper spit. Yeah. Alpacas don't really. Wait, what's the difference between a llama and an alpaca? Uh, llamas are way bigger. Oh, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all part of the the camel family. Uh, what's the difference between a camel and an alpaca? Llamas have... The are, uh, no, the humps and the size as well. The size. And like, um, I don't think, I don't think uh, camels are furry. Man, alpacas are so soft. Yeah, is that holy like, shit? But how did because you know the way alpacas are kind of they're indigenous to the southern American continent. Yeah, the north. Yeah, the, the nor- north of the, of South America. Yeah, but then camels are African. Yeah, what, but how are they related? That doesn't make. They're part of the same. Family. But like, how did they get there? I don't know, man. Because they were there when the Incas were there. Like, for, I'm sure before there was contact pre-Columbian. Right, if we're thinking about like, um, you know, whatever the you know whatever what's the t- what is the term for the original species that stuff sprouts out from. The last common ancestor. Yeah, I'm sure that their last common ancestor was around when, uh, you know, South America was up in Africa's hole, you know. Mm. <laughs> and then when it fucking moved apart, they 
dispersed and you know went up into the mountain mountainous <laughs> regions and you know they just got real small for some reason <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that, um, that does got happen. real f- furry because apparently they c- the alpacas can apparently sweat yeah so they can um they can survive heat and also cold because mm. um, their fur keeps them warm but they can sweat um whereas camels big long limbs mm. and a whole loads of water for the desert oh yeah um i don't know where do llamas are llamas basically from the same region i think llamas are also south american i'm fairly certain they are I'm pretty sure i think are they mexican are llamas in Me- Mexico? I don't, I, I'm sure they are, but I don't think they're Mexican. Where Mexican llamas. Where do llamas come from? Where did they come from? Um, but yeah, they're mad cute. They're mm. real... Um, South America. Yeah, same. South primarily America. Peru and Boliv- Bol- uh, Bolivia. Mm. So, yeah, just... They're from the same... Alpacas and llamas are more or less the fucking same. Yeah. More or less the same thing. Um, it's so weird. Yeah, I don't know how... Did you just tell me... Uh, like, they give us the old story before you go out and you're walking. And it's like, um, yeah, the guy that bought the place bought in 2011, mm. 2012, uh, where he just wanted it to be a farm, <clears throat> setting it up, you know, all that shit. And then in 2019, decided to open up to tourists. And it's like, what a shit time to have decided to do that. 2019, yeah, <laughs> and all the alpacas <laughs> starved to death. So. She was actually saying that, like, uh, a few years ago, they lost, like, they have, like, 81 on the farm now i don't know how many they had at the time but they lost 30 alpacas from tb tb yeah they got tb they got tb from the deers deer Mm. just roaming around yeah apparently yeah Yeah. but they're deer they're deers roaming around yeah up in wicklow yeah loads um unvaccinated deers roaming around <laughs> <laughs> the anti-vax deers yeah. yeah no this is what they do they kill your lavas <laughs> your alpacas <laughs> that's what they don't talk about yeah this is the, this is what they don't talk about you yeah, know yeah they never cover this on the fucking listen, lamestream media news listen right the right wing they talk about a lot of things they don't talk about the the llama pandemics <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> they're coming after our llamas <laughs> they kill me granny now they're going after the llamas <laughs> Stop. Those fucking deer. <laughs> yeah, the deer. But yeah, that's so weird. That's it's really cool though. It's such like such a novelty. Yeah. It was like thirty something quid. I was like, you know what? That was worth thirty quid. That's actually a really good deal. You know, just yeah. walking around with a llama for or no an alpaca for an hour, an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. And you gotta feed them. Their mouths are mad dry. Are they? Like you're sticking your hand in their mouth. Surprisingly like you hold it to the pellets or whatever and they eat it off your hand. I was expecting fucking slobber all over my hand. Uh. Man, you wouldn't even be able to tell. Really? Yeah, man. What's, what's the tom feel like? No tom, all lips. <laughs> all lips? All lips. They got like fuck all teeth as well. All oh, right. I think they got like bottom teeth, but they can't proper bite. Jesus. So, bits. I don't know how these creatures have survived <laughs> this long. <Yeah. laughs> it's a um, mystery. But they can run fast, apparently, but you know, that's about it. I've never, I can't even imagine that. I say that they just gallop. Yeah, yeah like in Emperor's New Clothes. He was a Emperor's llama. New Groove. He was a llama, not an alpaca. <laughs> yeah, uh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. You got a one alpaca farm. This guy is an expert on... I'm telling you. On, uh, I'm looking to invest. That's <laughs> all I'm saying. <laughs> invest. Parocoin is up at the moment. So Parocoin. Oh, I was in the bin for a long time. <laughs> Life saving has gone. But now we're on the way up, you we're know. We're back. We're all coming up the hill. <laughs> whatever happened to NFTs? NFTs are gone. To- yeah. Totally gone. They just died to death. Didn't Coins they? are still running though. Coins are still going <coughs> going strong. NFTs, yeah, they they're worth nothing now. I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, a guy now at work actually minted his own line of NFTs just as the crash happened. Um, it was like two euro, um, to mint one, and he had I don't know how many. He had like a few dozen, maybe like eighty NFTs made minted, and he put them up on OpenSea. Um, and within days, like the NFT, the entire NFT market crashed. But not because of what he put. They put them up. <laughs> he did it. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "This is the last straw." <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, they just. He was like, he just wasted all his money. Um, oh, one hundred sixty quid. It's not too bad. It's a funny little project. He it used, is. He got to use it as his, like uh, his profile picture and work. Everyone's like, "What the fuck is your profile picture?" It's like it's one of my. It's, it's a line. Of, he had like this backstory that he could he could like he could just whip out, oh. which is pretty good. So I don't know if I'd spend one hundred sixty euro for that backstory, but like. <laughs> <laughs> when he said under backstory now, I was like, oh, I put money into NFTs and just crashed. <laughs> they just crashed, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they're gone, I think. I, Shame. I never hear anything about NFTs anymore. 
Yeah, well, it was Good. a scam. It was transparently a scam, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a joke. <laughs> oh, man. Deal. What's Deal. the newest trend? What's the next like crypto trend? The newest trend. Even, even crypto seems to not be a thing really anymore. Um, ah, crypto is. It's just kind of bubbling away. It's because I think... It, isn't the economy about to like just fall off a cliff? I think that's the main thing is that yeah. like we're going into like you know the biggest recession ever seen. Yeah, like, they, they they keep saying oh it's just a correction, but it's been going on for like four months, and like they keep like cutting jobs, inflation just like won't stop. It's like oh, that's just a correction. It's just a correction. We're not in re- we're not in re- technically we're not in a recession. No, but like they keep firing people. <laughs> yeah, because everything's everything's still fucked. It's like it's like a slow burn. You know, it's a control burn. It's a cold war of recessions. <laughs> it's a cold war. It never recovered from the last recession. And things have gotten even worse. And they're like, nah, everything's everything's all right. Look, yeah. look at the graphs. Look, look profits, these, are, profits are up. Look at these graphs we made. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, the other industry's doing really well. The, lo- the line's going up. That means we're doing good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the line means, I don't know. Yeah, ah, I don't know. Yeah, crypto, I don't know. How's your Litecoin portfolio going? Um, or, do you have uh, any portfolio? No, no. <laughs> My Bitcoin portfolio, I don't even want to look at it. Don't even want to look at it. Did you were you ever heavily investing in crypto? No, no, but I once invested sixty euro and it it skyrocketed and at one point it was worth about six hundred euro. But now it's worth maybe pretty back down to sixty. <laughs> 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 I never used it, you know, it's just there. Um actually I don't think you even have like the laptop that it's on, it's in uh my mom's house, I'm pretty sure as well. Oh, so, or you can have like one of those uh hard drives that people have that's got like ter- three billion Worth of uh, cri- uh, worth of Bitcoin on it. You could have one of those in your hands. I could, I could, I could. Actually, one of my old, like my old, old laptops. I remember because uh, back in TUI, um, one of the lads in our class was big into. Well, it's not, it wasn't big. In, you know the way people are big into crypto now. Mm-hmm. It wasn't big, and it was like it's just kind of like a this thing that you would talk about. Um, Is it the one weirdo that you knew that knew about crypto? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd, he'd be, he'd be, he be he was like on that train back in 2014, 2013, 2014. Um, strange guy, but anyway. Um, it was really easy to mine it back then, where you could just like kind of like leave. You go onto a website and like leave it for like an hour or whatever, and it would use your like server mm-hmm. power or whatever to mine crypto. Um, but I don't, I don't have no idea what number because I I did have a wallet and stuff. But I have no idea what number it might have been. Um, but maybe it's like a bajillion euro. I don't know because like it's it would have been worth a lot, like like fractions of a cent back then. But obviously yeah. exponentially, it's like yeah. worth hundreds, thousands of times times more now than it was then you know um so who knows well that's that, that uh, it doesn't matter that laptop is gone anyway it's in the bin <laughs> somewhere so i don't know it's nobody even talking about this i'm just teasing myself <laughs> anyway you don't know what you have bro i don't know what i have i don't know what i lost because i didn't know what i had you never know what you have until it's gone that's so true you know just like george lucas and the star wars movies what the fuck was that? It was X Files. Sorry. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't rec- recognize that from Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, Star Wars prequels. You I watched the Star Wars prequels. I did. What the hell? Um, what was that about? I don't know, man. I was in work and I was watching YouTube in the background, you know, working away on some Excel sheet or whatever. And I was watching this video that was <laughs> that you the gas thing was about this. Right, so I watched uh, some video. I can't remember what the name of it was. It was about um, what's an effect where the less you know about something, the more you think that you know. And then when you eventually get to the point where you're like, you, like, if you the know... The Dunning-Kruger effect. That's it. Yeah. It was a video about that. Oh, right. um, And in terms of um, how YouTubers and shit, shit like that mm. talk about Star Wars and films, and uh, specifically Star Wars fans, and how that they, you know, they have watched, you know, a bit about Star Wars. So therefore, they think they know everything. Mm. Um, but then, when you actually do, the more that you learn about something, the less you like. The more you realize that you know fucking nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, because uh, <clears throat> I think that's, I think that's um, like film bros and stuff like that. People like us, like people like us. But I think we're very we're better than that. We're well because we're aware of the fact that we know fuck all about film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like in the grand scheme of things, no yeah. dick all about films. Don't know why people listen to this podcast. <laughs> 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 but um, never even watch movies. No, but because uh, it's like the film bro thing where it's like oh, I know the top, I know the IMDb top two fifty films, so therefore mm. I know everything about cinema. Um. Do you know what I mean? Watch the Letterbox 250, bro. So you know nothing. <laughs> Level up. You're not as good as me, bro. Level up, man. <laughs> um, but so it's about that, 
and um, I was like, that's a pretty good video. And I click onto the guy's YouTube channel, and uh, he had a seven part video about why Woody Allen was innocent. Seven parts. Seven par- like that's such dedication. Each one twenty minutes long. <laughs> twenty minutes long, but like it's like, not even like is innocent of what of all I, the I, allegations. I know he did one thing that's fucked up, and that's all I need to know. He married his daughter. He married his daughter. That's enough for me, it's man. It's like, what do you mean innocent? You can't be innocent after that, you know, no matter what it's you like, do. Did he, like, what was it, the adopted daughter? Yeah, it was his stepdaughter. Like, sure. I don't know what, like, I don't know. That's some mad he, fetish He's shit. illegal of that, anyway. <laughs> I don't give a shit about anything else. He's illegal of that, which is enough. Um, but, uh... <clears throat> But I was like, that was a good YouTube video. And then I watched it, I was like, oh, that's still a good YouTube video. <laughs> um, and then I was like, interested. I was like, I've, I, you know, I, I think we've shot on Star Wars a, a bit. Uh, I think way back in like the early days of the podcast, we both talked about how we tried to watch uh, Empire Strikes Back. Back in the Zoom days, yeah. And we found it so fucking boring mm. um, and didn't didn't watch it. And I haven't touched Star Wars since then. Um, like I've seen A New Hope and I've seen Empire Strikes Back. And I watched Force Awakens, whatever the fuck, 2017, 2016? 20, yeah, something like something that. Something like that, 2016, 2017. I watched that when that came out, and I was like, that was grand. <laughs> and uh, yeah. like, that was my opinion on everything I've watched the Star Wars, so I never, you know, I never, I've never really liked Star Wars. It's like, fuck it, I'm going to watch the prequels. Or at the very least, I was like, oh, I'll watch Phantom Menace. And I watched that, and I was like... <laughs> I liked that. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Why? There's What's good about it? Oh. Rather than right, let's forget the people who are like, uh, the uh, prequels. Yeah. And, uh, Fuck those what's, people. What's good about it? Uh, it's an incredibly messy film. Um, but I don't know. There's something about it. Um, like it's a nice. It's just a grand. Like Darth Maul. Darth Maul is fucking cool. Yeah. He's. F- barely in the fucking film. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I think he's in four scenes. <laughs> um, he gets chopped in half. And he gets chopped in half. <laughs> but, like, he's real cool. Uh, Obi-Wan and... <clears throat> it's kind of hard to talk about just, like... Phantom Qui-Gon Menace. Jinn. Qui-Gon, yeah, that's his name. I couldn't think of this guy. It was just silly <laughs> Um I think the way they really talk about the about Phantom Menace is in, you know, lock with everything else of the prequels. Because mm. by itself, it's like... Yeah, it's a kind of shitty ish film it's got some Jar Jar Binks is real bad Jeez, Jar, 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 Binks. Jar Jar Binks is real bad he's not as annoying as I was expecting him to be mm. but he's not good um, yeah there was no need for him to be a racial stereotype man, to oh, be man, a, the a combination a- of like 10 different racial stereotypes there was no need there's like uh, there's oh, what's, there's um, there's a there's a Middle Eastern uh, alien that's also a stereotype I'm like wow yeah <laughs> like, every alien is a horrific <laughs> Stereotype. Um, it's like these people are so weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look, at these, look at these sand people. <laughs> um, so you know, stereotypes and jar-jumping aside. Um, one thing that I really okay. So we're going to talk about the shit first. Um, the one thing that really fucking annoys with the film is uh, Natalie Portman and uh, Kira Knightley. I do not understand why. Did you know that Kira Knightley is in this film? You just reminded me, yeah. Yeah, because I was watching it and I was like, I thought Natalie Portman was um, the princess. Mm. Um, and then it's like this whole fucking thing. It was like, I actually am the princess. I was like, oh, I knew it. But I was like, what? I was looking at it. I was like, why did they get Natalie Portman to play two characters? <laughs> I was, for ages, I was like staring at like Keira Knightley. Who I didn't know it was Keira Knightley. Being like, yeah. why did they get Natalie Portman to play two people in the same film? That's so fucking confusing. And then I looked it up and I was like, why no? Why is Natalie Portman only credited for one? Oh, it's Kira Knightley that plays Kira Knightley that plays the queen in this. Phantom Menace. Yeah, and I was like, why did you get two people that look very, very similar to play body doubles of each other? Yeah. Um, because I was saying it to one of the lads, I was like, why would you if you're a body double? Why would you get and then you know you review yourself afterwards to be you know the actual princess, or whatever? Why would you get someone that looks exactly like you? So that people could be like, well, you know, if it's not that one, it's the other one. They just look the exact same. So we know what she looks like anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so th- just that was very confusing for like half an hour. Yeah. Um, but, you know, once I go over that, it was grand. And then the second film, they don't really, 
I was just the second when it gets into the second film, the stuff about the Queen as well in that film where like uh Keira Knightley dies, but I thought it was I thought it was Natalie Portman that died. I just hold back and forth. I was unbelievably like, No Keira Knightley <laughs> just should not be in this film. She's just confused the shit out of me. But anyway. Yeah. Um But the whole there's like so there are t- I do have to kind of talk about the Star Wars fans and how they talk about the film because one thing I always heard about this film is that like the politics is mad confusing there's too much politics there's like fuck all politics in this film mm. but it's basically like I, I the way I view the, f- the 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 prequels is that first film really establishes like the political landscape that allows for the empire to take over in the third one mm. so we have this like trade the trade war. The trade war going on. And there's people blockading, whatever, whatever the fuck. Mm. Um, and you got Palpatine in the background, like playing off all these people. So, the first one really establishes like all the politics, and then the st- and Anakin is introduced into the film. And really, I think that the way that the prequels kind of should be viewed is, you have all the politics in the background. You have Anakin, who's kind of in the middle of all this, and just how Palpatine plays off the politics and Anakin within all this stuff to eventually take over and, you know, create Darth Vader. Mm. Cause Anakin is such a, a real tragic character. Yeah. yeah like yeah. he's a kid that is born from the force. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Immaculate conception. The midichlorians. Like he's a fucking, he's Jesus. <laughs> he is, he's space Jesus. He's space Jesus. But Jesus wasn't evil. Jesus so was so evil. So they say. Um, but he's basically space Jesus, and he's you know he he meets Jedi's who are like he sees as absolute heroes. And Qui Je- Qui, what's the fuck is his name? Qui Gon Jinn. Jesus, Qui Gon Jinn is Qui-Gon like um, you're the most important person in the universe. <laughs> The like hell. straight <laughs> off the bat, like you are unbelievably important. You yeah. could be the person that like brings balance to the force. You could be the savior of, of everything. Mm. Uh, you're gonna be like the greatest Jedi that's ever lived. So he's like a kid taught this by Qui Gon, Qui fucking hell, by Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson. <laughs> <laughs> Qui Gon Jim. Why is that so hard to say? Qui Gon Jim. He's taught this by Jim, <laughs> and um, then in the st- and then Qui Gon dies. Mm. And not only is the person that probably could have led Anakin, like, you know, through the right way and, you know, onto the good side of the force, uh, he's given to Obi-Wan. And Obi-Wan is way too young and is not prepared to be a Jedi Master or have um, a... An apprentice. What are they called? A Padawan. A Padawan. It's not Palpatine, that's not it. Young Padawan. A Padawan. He's not, he's not old enough to, or experienced enough to either become a Jedi Master where he is at the moment and he's definitely not ready to have a Padawan. So he gets Anakin and Anakin is a arrogant little shit because he's told you were going to be the best thing since sliced bread, bro. Um, <laughs> and he's got that And he's got that fucking... I think he's got like a little fucking... He's got a little rat tail. Yeah, he's got a rat tail. I'm pretty <laughs> sure in the second film. And then the third film, he's just rocking this awesome hair. Yeah, right. He's, 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 he's hot in the he third is, film. He is... Oof. Everyone's hot in the third film. Yeah, that volcano planet isn't the only hot thing oh, in no. the range of the Sith. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at Palpatine turning into Darth Sidious. Oof. Oof. Um, but then, like, so in the second film, then, it's, you know, there's slightly more uh, Anakin's story and, like, how he falls in love with Padme. Why is there so many P's in, <laughs> in uh, Padme, Star Padme, Padawan. Palpatine. Um, so he falls in love with Padme and, you know, that whole political stuff is going on you got like you know obi-wan really like showing how he's really not ready to have a a padawan and just you know again you got um palpatine then in the background being like you are the best like he sees that anakin is cocky and he's like if i just if i just put a little pressure on you and i start like getting in your ear and i become real mates with you i'm gonna turn you against everyone it's gonna be so easy yeah and then the third film and like even like attack of the clones is like shot on for being mad born um it's not you know it's really not how it's, long are these movies they're just over two hours it's not that bad it's really not that bad mm. um also like just like <laughs> jedis fucking suck in the prequels and i seen like that is the point mm. like they sit around and do nothing throughout these three films yeah yeah um but that's like the entire point and there's definitely um uh similarities and comparisons that could be made between the the republic or whatever the fuck the 
the institution or the government is in in the prequels to uh, the Weimar Republic and how mm, yeah, they just yeah. like Palpatine just turns into a fascist state. Like it is the exact like he more or less does the exact same thing that Hitler d- does. Yeah, yeah, and like you have the like order. Uh, 66 is basically like the night of the long knives and stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. just executing all the people that could get in your way. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, it's just like how fascism takes over is essentially like the story of the prequels. Mm. Um, and then you got, you know, Jesus being turned into the antichrist, uh, the it as well. And like they're, you know, the writing, some of the dialogue is fucking awful. Um, that, that I think revenge of the Sith is the best one of the three. Ah, oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Revenge of the Sith is a banging film. It is. It actually, I, 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 I've always defended Revenge of the Sith. I always will. I always will. It's I, a very good film. I still remember seeing that in the Savoy. I just remember the smell of the popcorn. I remember I had a pencil case with Anakin's face on it. <laughs> I bought it in Dolan's for like two euro. <laughs> Solid. I had, I had all my markers in there. Well, Revenge of the Sith is actually it's it's a pretty good film. Well, yeah, people like slam the writing, but then like, uh, like I don't know because it's gotten it had so long. Because like between what 1999 and 2015, when the sequel trilogy started coming mm-hmm. out, it's like it was just kind of people just shat on Star Wars, the prequels specifically. I think people kind of let up on Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, cause but the like, first cause Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones get shat on a lot. Yeah, yeah, but then like the the they made the new ones like oh we're listening to you. I remember all the promo materials like we're we're using practical effects. It's like we're, we got loads of fan service. And then the movies came out and they're all shit. By all <laughs> they're accounts, even worse. They're actually, they're, they're like, yeah, they're like, they're worse because like they're insulting and like condescending in a like, kind of way. Mm-hmm. Some people like them, but whatever. Um, but like it shows like the writing, like some of the, some of the lines in, in the, the sequel movies are shockingly bad. Oh man. Like shockingly bad. Like the, the prequels, was it George Lucas? He didn't write them on his own, did he? I, I don't think not. he did anything with the, I don't think he did anything with the, with the sequels. No, I'm pretty sure. He I don't think. I think he might have produced them, but I don't think he did anything. Uh, yeah, he definitely. I'm did pretty it. sure I heard he got bullied out of making films from the prequels. I didn't. Like yeah, he ev- said he never wants to make a film again since that. Ever see the clips of him sitting watching the previews? And he's like, oh, I made a mistake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I went too far with some stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> yeah, but like at least he's like he's aware. It's like J.J. Abrams sitting there watching. Uh, you know, The Force Awakens. It's like jacking himself off, being like, I'm the best director ever. It's I made like, a great film. Yeah, like, oh, wow. I've just, I've just, I've saved the most iconic franchise in science fiction history. Um, but like, then he just, like, it turns out it's just like an all right film. Yeah, it's George Lucas is like having like a mental breakdown watching The Phantom Menace. Yeah, there's like footage of it and like mm-hmm. the, the, the bonus features. And he's just like, it's like, oh, I went. He's like in the room with all his, like, his yes men and like his lackeys. He's like, guys, I think I went too far with this one. <laughs> it's like, at least he was aware. Yeah. You know? But, like, I only, I appreciate... I think I... We uh, were saying this before, and I appreciate messy films that have decent qualities in them far more than films that are just, like, good. I actually end up liking messy... Like, films that are technically bad, mm. but have, like, a lot of... um, What's the word I'm looking for? Ambition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ambitious, mm. messy films that have some shit, but there's good shit to talk about. That is, that's what I, that's what I like. It's more charming. More Way charming. more charming. I think I'm going to prefer even Phantom Menace to anything in the sequels. Well, I, from what I've heard, I think The Last Jedi is mad pessy, so I think I might like that. Um, But, like, they're, even just the fact that they're just a story of the Weimar Republic and how fascism rises and stuff like that. Mm. Um, The story of, like, Jesus turning into, like, the Antichrist. Palpatine, what he's doing on the background. The fucking, um, the design of the world that is something that i never i don't think i ever really took notice of that while watching the original films this time around watching these prequels is like man the like the ship's design the the aliens like how Mm. everything looks the sound design of these films is so good Oh man, there's just like the sounds of the ships and the lasers and like the music is so good. Oh my John god, yeah, yeah, that fucking um, theme in the th- in the in Revenge of the Sith that's turned into a meme now. Fucking so good. Yeah, I don't know that one. Lightsaber side fights is something that I never really liked in the first in the in the original films when I watched mm. them. Man. They're great. They're so good. They're so cool. They're so needless. Oh man. It's like well, they have guns. They fight with swords. The sword is better. 
sword is the sword is better. It's you know I don't know. I'd use an I'd use a sword if I could deflect bullets with it. Yeah, yeah, true. You yeah. know, if you think about that. <laughs> 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 the um, do you know who I prefer to Darth Maul though? Who? General Grievous. I think. Gen- uh, I was always a huge General Grievous fan. I, I love think General Grievous. He's so fucking cool. He's got four arms. Yeah, and yeah. And can yeah. use lightsabers. He's like he's got that evil voice. Oh, he's so evil. Yeah, he's, he's like, pure p- evil. And uh, even have fucking um, Count Do- uh, Count Christopher Dooku. Lee. Yeah, Count Dooku. Count Dooku's banging as well. Yeah, <laughs> he's great when he beheads that guy for no reason. Yeah, he just or does is that it. Anakin does it? No, Anakin does it to... T- no, way. Oh, he has the, the two lightsabers. Just yeah, Anakin does that. I, he t- makes Anakin do it, yeah, yeah. Palpatine makes him do it. He's like, do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> 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 I love the, the catharsis of like... Like the like the Revenge of the Sith has, kind of has like a has like a, a head start. Because you get that part at the end of the film where it's wrapping up and you get like this proper like, oh, you get like all the, the gravitas associated with like, this is like, mm-hmm. that's that's Luke Skywalker. This is, this is fucking, this is Darth Vader being born, you know? Yeah. And like that whole last... And the evil wins. The what? Evil wins yeah, at the end yeah, of the yeah. prequels. And you're like, oh, here, like this is the, this is where the story uh, drops off and then, you know, the rest is like the myth of Star Wars as, as, as everyone already knew it. Mm-hmm. Um, and even that last, he's like, no, it's like so, it's like kind of funny, but like at the same time, it's like, oh, this is like, this is so like, a, you know, epic is such like a lame word, but it, yeah, is, it yeah. is like, no, it's, it is. It's, it's like, it's, it's a, there's a real like mythos to, uh, to, to every frame of, of the sequence, you know, it's, it's just really, it's, it's packed with meaning mm-hmm. and, uh, nostalgia, but not like nostalgia in the same way the Force Awakens. It seems like it's leading up. It's like it's like a cycle of a mythos. It's like the that, perfect that makes sense. It's like yeah. a way that like the prequels just slides perfectly into the original. Films yeah, then. yeah, yeah. Um, and there's gaps. They leave loads of gaps, but like it's kind of like it's more evocative than say like the gaps between the originals and the sequel trilogy, where it's just like kind of like whoa, we're back. Yeah, no, it's yeah. Like, whoa. I remember watching the fucking Force Awakens and being like. I don't know how any of this stuff ties into the original films. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can't just, see uh, how... There's Luke Skywalker, but, uh, you know, what... Just living out in the middle of nowhere. Just living there, yeah. <laughs> just living on a... Uh, what, what's that place? In a... Sh- Skellig Vickiel, yeah. Sk- yeah, just living out in Ireland. Just living in Fair play them. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, man, like, I thought that the prequels were pretty good films. Um, I like, they're messy and somewhat bad. There's... Did you know what I hate? The one I really don't like about Revenge of the Sith? Mm. There's so many quips. I fucking hate quips. There's such, like... Huh, I hate when he does that or like huh. we've got company yeah oh man we got company <laughs> <laughs> well what's out there yeah. shit like that I'm just like oh stop fuck off it's always Obi-Wan <laughs> Kenobi as well for some reason yeah so you're so serious in the original series <laughs> yeah. what the hell happened oh uh, the the younglings as well the, yeah Jesus he's killed younglings the younglings but I just I love how dark Revenge of the Sith is mm. it's such a dark film they chop off his legs what the fuck? I yeah, know, yeah. So, and um, I think he loses an arm as well. Yeah, yeah. Like he's just, he's just like a, he's like a husk at the end. Um, so, it's like, oh, I hate you. Yeah, it's so on the nose, <laughs> but it doesn't really matter, you know. No, no, it doesn't. Um, it's like um, Shakespearean, and it's uh, like, so, like I always think with Shakespeare, the way to like read Shakespeare is just, like read it as like heightened emotions for everything mm. like everything that you like when someone's like going through this sil- like soliloquy about like the earth and the moon and the stars and my love for you or like you know the wind is howling and I'm yeah. yelling out and like, stuff that's like that. not realistic dialogue man it's like yeah it's just meant to be heightened emotions you know theatricality it's a space yeah. space opera it's spa- yeah, space yeah literally opera. that's what Star Wars is just space opera yeah. you know ever see there's the uh, in chapters they have it there's the Shakespearean adaptation of the Star Wars prequels I'm not surprised that's a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember looking through for the... Um, I remember I, I, I saw them a few years ago. I was looking through for the the, the uh, exchange between Obi-Wan and uh, Anakin about the high ground. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what the, the, the wording was, but it was just so funny. Yeah. The way it was done. <laughs> because it does kind of... It does work. Like, it actually translates, no, yeah. translates quite well because they do just... A lot of times they do just say what they, they feel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm angry. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> God, he really fucking nails that line yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited. I'm actually look. Well, I'm looking forward again to re-watching the OG films because I've never watched past Empire Strikes Back. I've mm. never seen 
Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi. Oh, it's alright. I watched twenty minutes of that film. I was like, "This is so fucking boring." <laughs> Wait, what, what's the what's the beginning of the film? I can't remember. Do you remember? Do you recall? Um, I don't think I've ever watched past the point where they save Han Solo from Jabba the Hutt, and there's like that big like mouth in the sand. Jabba the Hutt. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. That's where they're yeah, yeah. The the Sarlacc bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's is is where it, Boba it, Fett dies. Um. Yeah, but he doesn't die, man. Um. No, I, I remember liking that because the, the 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 final. It's a, it's like it's very. It's very. It's it's like, it's not like Revenge of the Sith, but like you know the way they did the the ending. The ending so, cathartic. Mm-hmm. So cathartic. I want to spoil it now. <laughs> Does Darth Vader die? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the way it's done is like, <sighs> you're kind of like, oh, like this is like like the whole series been leading up to this. Mm-hmm. And um, I've never actually watched them. I only ever watched the original series. I never really. I Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. I don't re- really remember anything about those films. I just remember like snapshots and stuff. Mm-hmm. Revenge of Sith, I remember, I remember quite well. But I was I, re- I liked the original films, so I'd rewatch them. Um, but I'd say in a like a, as a cycle of films, if you watch them together, it's like the Revenge of the Sith. The catharsis at the end of that is kind of comparable to the the at the end of uh, Last Jedi, mm-hmm. where you're like, oh, you yeah, you're like. Yes, yes, yes. But, but in Revenge of the Sith, it's kind of like yes, but in like an evil way. Sorry. And then at the end of uh, Last Jedi, it's like yes, Return of the Jedi, whatever. Return. Of the- <laughs> <laughs> Here is the Last Jedi. <laughs> Why do they call it that? Yeah, Re- Return of the Jedi. It's 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 like a it's just a really cool final like boss battle. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I, the lightning. I love the um, the various different ways that people talk about watching Star Wars. Have you ever heard like? Because I'm just watching them just episodically, like. One now to nine. Mm. I'm going to do that. But, you know, you can do the OGs and then do the prequels and then the sequels. Mm. Or you can do the flashback method. The flashback method. So where you watch Ooh. A New Hope, you watch Return of the Jedi, and then you watch... No, you ret- watch New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and then you go back and you watch the the prequels. And then you watch Return of the Jedi. Why? Because you see... Like, uh, start with like Luke, I am your father, and then there's like the the heroes are gone, and then you go back and you see how Anakin became Darth Vader, and then you watch Luke fight Darth Vader. Mm, yeah, yeah. Don't know what psychopath would ever decide to watch films like that, but that means you actually have to watch all six films pretty much in a row. Yeah, you do. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds kind of cool, but that's no. just watching them. That's this. You just basically watch them in a row, but you just watch slot the. The third film into at the end. At yeah, the end. Yeah. It's the flashback method, man. It's the flashback method. It sounds kind of cool, but no way. It's, yeah, it doesn't sound. Oh, thanks. No. Yeah. Can't be asked. I don't even think. I don't even think you bought her because you, you kind of forget about <laughs> Empire Strikes Back by the time you finish. <laughs> yeah. Rents, yeah. <laughs> you have to read the Wikipedia page again. It's like, oh, who's his father again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I that is one thing I would have loved to have been in the cinema to see. What. The, oh, I am your father. I am your father. Yeah, that would that would that would, that is a truly great moment. You know the way they didn't. He didn't say that line. You know. Yeah, he, he never. He never said. He, like the actor didn't say that line because the actor. The actor kind of sounded like this. He's like, <laughs> ever see like the Darth Vader, like his the actual actor. Oh yeah, yeah. He yeah. talks like he's like he's like. Uh, I was like, no, I am your father. Like he just like he Seinfeld. Talk, yeah, he, he sounds I'm like Jerry. Father. Yeah, Jerry Seinfeld kind of thing. And then they got. Um, you remember with the D voice, what's his name? James Orange Jones. Yeah, yeah. To the dub. Um so none of them none of the people on set, I think except for uh, Mark Hamill, knew what the line that Darth Vader was saying was. You know? Mm. Cause they were trying to keep it under wraps. And they could do that um much easier then than they obviously could now. Because there is no comp- like I I, th- I think they that's what they tried to do with Palpatine is back. <laughs> and uh <laughs> He just comes back in the title card as well, doesn't he? Yeah, somehow he came back. Yeah, yeah. They just, like, they oh, just introduced, yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, he's back. What? <laughs> <laughs> How? They do that quite a bit, though, in Star Wars. It was just like, ex- like, it was like, oh, General Grievous is after taking over this place. And it's like, who the fuck is General Grievous? <laughs> 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 it's like, Count Dooku's doing this. Like, who the fuck is Count Dooku? <laughs> Count Dooku, yeah. Mace Window is, uh, is here. Yeah, it's Sam Jackson as Mace Window. It's like, 
he's also great as well. Yeah, he's pretty his good. Purple lightsaber. Oh, man, I love purple, purple lightsaber. <laughs> what, would, what would your lightsaber color be? Oh, that's a, that's an amazing question. That's a great listener question. Mm. If I ever heard one, someone should ask us that. Fuck yeah, <laughs> fuck's sake. Uh, I, I'd say my lightsaber would be. It'd be kind of a. It would be kind of a vivid blue. Blue. I'm seeing a vivid like a. What do you mean? What do you mean a vivid blue? It's like kind of like a, a darkish blue. A darkish that's blue. That's what I go with. Mm. What would you go? Because uh, I like blue. I'm a huge fan of the purple. The purple. I like the purple. Mm. But like, if I'm to go with like favorite colors, piss yellow. <laughs> is shit there, brown? I feel like there is a yellow <laughs> lightsaber. I sure there is. Yeah. I don't think there is in the films. But I'm pretty sure it's in Attack of the Clone or the Clone Wars, mm. the TV show. What would I go for? I think I'd go for like orange. Orange. The orange. You're, the, you're just the guy with the orange lightsaber then. He's like, fucking the loser. Gin- ginger. <laughs> ah, how are you, Reds are? It's strawberry uh, blood. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, this guy, uh, uh, we had a party in my gaff like a year ago, and this guy brought a lightsaber, like a functioning, well, not a real lightsaber, but like a, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> he, brought, he brought a lightsaber and he could like, yeah, ever have the old ones. I used to have like yeah, I used to the blue one. I could press it and just whoosh, but it would just be like kind of like. Yo, no, I had one where you had to like you had to like throw your hand forward mm. and it'd slide out and then you could press the button. Yeah, yeah, and turn on, mm. but it was just kind of like plastic. You could just squeeze it together. But he had this. He had it apparently cost eight hundred quid. And it was like it was hefty, he- like hefty hilt. I think it was like r- it was like metal, proper metal, um, and you could press it and it'd make all the sounds, but like not make them in the way that like a toy that you buy in Smiths would make them. Mm-hmm. It's it it kind of like. Oh, Luke, like, I am your father. Like that kind of thing. <laughs> It'd be kind of like like proper like like stereo kind of sound. Yeah, and yeah. And then it would like it would it automatically goes, eject and like, and it would, it would, every time you moved, it, goes, it was really cool. But like eight hundred quid, fuck that. Yeah, fuck that. No but chance. Man, I'd fucking love one of those though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm after watching the prequels. Like shit, I want to get one of those. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. I'll report back next episode when I watch the original trilogy. Um, Speed running. You know? The Star Wars, and then I'll do the sequels, and trilogy, then trilogies, trilogies. Because I want to watch um, Attack of the Clones. No, God damn it! Why the fuck do all these have the same name? Um, the Clone Wars. I do want to watch that at some stage. The TV show, because apparently it's meant to be very good. The Cartoon Network one. Yeah, I remember watching that when I was younger. I mean, like this is really good. I remember being freaked out by the animation, so I never watched it. Yeah, no, the animation's a bit weird, but yeah. I'm older now. I've grown. I'll get over it. <laughs> I'll grow up. <laughs> grow up. Oh, God. We've talked about Star Wars for half an hour. Do you something else? Let's talk about Predators. Predators. Which, a, different, a different sci-fi franchise. Let's jump back into the science fiction universe of Predators. Uh, so, Predators is a sequel to Predator and Predator 2. But it's also not really sequentially it's a linked. Off. It's a, more of a spin-off. Yeah, it's a spin-off, which was released in 2009 or 2010, something like that. It's on I think Plus. it's 2011. Is it? I think it's 2011. 2011. Uh, it has Adrian Brody. It has <laughs> has uh, Topher Grace. Danny has, Trejo. Danny Trejo's in it for a bit. Um, does Danny Trejo ever survive any film that he's in? I don't think he does. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Help me. Yeah, no. Uh, Predators. Another... Like, 2010. The, the more we get into this franchise, the more I'm like... Like, what the hell is with the Predator hate? Why yeah. are people so obsessed with Alien, the Alien universe? How many Alien movies did we watch? Four? Four. Four? Well, six. Six. For counting Prometheus and Alien Covenant. Okay, well, let's not count them. Yeah, so four. Four. Only only two of them were, were like, remo- good. remotely good. <laughs> yeah. The other ones were dog shit. Predators, the Predator universe, we've watched three. And so far, all three are at least somewhat good. I Predators think- is actually all right. I think it's that no film in the Predator f- franchise, and I'm including like like Predator in the in the in the cultural canon. The zeitgeist. The zeitgeist. Predator isn't as good as Aliens. Mm. So, and like Aliens is nowhere near as good as Alien. So no film in Predator ever reaches the heights of the Alien franchise. Oh no no! But it, I think that Predator never reaches the depths that the Alien franchise no, reaches. No, not so and far. It doesn't come anywhere close. I'm even certain that the Predator is isn't as bad as 
alien three or four resurrection yeah yeah and so i'd also include because i think alien covenant is dog shit as well um yeah, yeah, yeah but i think that um the predator might be just below alien covenant might be but i uh, said but predators is better than alien 3 and it's better than alien resurrection oh yeah by a mile by a good by, bit by a mile this is actually a good action film it's a perfectly acceptable enjoyable action film that you'd find your dad asleep on the couch watching mm-hmm. on a dadcore film a da- serious dadcore film and uh, it's it's tuesday evening you come home your dad's asleep on the couch predators is on tv for it's whatever half, reason halfway through the <laughs> film and uh, danny trejo's just been blown to bits you're like i'm home <laughs> 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 it's like this is just dad core <laughs> uh, i'm home <laughs> yeah yeah um it's no it's good it's good it's good predators but i would say i would, I, I would consider predator better than aliens i and think well, i would say that as well I, 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 aliens is good i don't but maybe i don't know Maybe I just don't in terms of actual film. filmmaking, it's not. But I think per- yeah, like it's got better fucking sets and yeah, it's you know, cooler. It's maybe. also got a much bigger budget, so yeah, yeah. But no, Predators. What did you think of Predators? Um, I remember watching Predators and being like, oh, "It's not that great." But watching this time, like, it's actually surprisingly decent. Um, like I like the concept of the what the fuck are the Predators? What is the name of the species? I have no idea. Because, like, we know that they're called xenomorphs and alien. What the fuck is a predator? Um, what are their alien species? Is I like the way that they just abduct um, military badasses and serial killers or whatever. Just gets people who are hunters and killers and just sticks them on their planet and then they just hunt them <laughs> for fun. Yeah, yeah, that's it's, it's it's a cool idea. It's know? a cool idea. A planetary game reserve. It's a very cool idea. I thought for this film, um, apparently predators are known as the yaucha. The yaucha. Mm. Yauch. It's the sound they sound you make when you meet one. Oh, nah, I'm mostly screaming. It's <laughs> 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 and there's there's a uh, there's also there's also okay. This is weird. Because there's different so- types there's, there's of different predator. There's different tribes. Yeah, which is th- that's what's in this so film. In this film, this is the first film in the franchise to introduce a rival clan called the Hish Q10. I've no idea. I did. I did not pick up on that at all. Did so. you know the fuck? Remember he takes the big. There's yeah, the, he's, in fact, he's captive. I he, thought he was just he, kind of like bait. No, no, he's the smaller one, and then the other one, the the predator, the predators that are hunt actually hunting, uh, the people are much bigger. Than the predator that's or the predator. Fuck, this is so confusing. The alien that is in the original two films is a smaller predator than the predators that are in this film. They even have a different face. Like they take off the mask and their heads are different. Oh, I did not pick up on that. It's only all. like it's not like, like they're they got bigger like fangs and shit, mm. and their face is like slightly different. But okay, they're bigger overall. Um, because like that predator gets. His shit wrecked by the big one. My god, he didn't stand a chance. Yeah, yeah, he's in bits. That's oh, 4 2. Fuck me. Anyway. Told you we were gonna. Of... Told you Liverpool weren't gonna do it. <laughs> anyway. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, Predators is good though. I liked, I liked it. I liked it. It was good action. Mm-hmm. It was good setups. Good violence. You know? Yeah. The violence was like, it was real. It was there. Um, and I like. Even the whole initial setup, it's so like, it's very very tropey, but it makes it work in the way that a good sci-fi film can, you know, because it it's it plays itself off, it just skips because it, it, you're kind of taken away by the momentum of the story that you don't you don't care the mm-hmm. fuck. It's like what's what's Topher Grace's, what's it, what's his motivation here? Why is he why is he? You're not really questioning that because you're caught up in the action. Um, well, yeah, I I was anyway. I didn't realize he was he was spoilers. He's a bad guy. He's a bad guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's not even the bad guy. So he's is, just... is he a mole? He's they sent him down there. As a no, mole. he's just a psychopath. Okay. So like he like he's like he's just one of them, but for some reason he decides to start killing the only people that could actually yeah that, save him. Oh, that, that makes less sense now. Makes, yeah, yeah it makes way less sense. But like I thought he was like a mole. He's just a psychopath that can that's a serial killer. Yeah. Um and decides to turn on the people that could save him from mm. the big aliens after he's he's basically he's already dead pretty much 
Yeah, I think they're, he's with they're, that. They're all are the the him and the girl are both dead, pretty mm-hmm. much. At that point in the story, and he decides to kill her. Why? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, me. just because he can. Just because he can, I suppose. Yeah, that's, that's, that's he's a psychopath. Doesn't need yeah. reasons. It's a it's a good idea though. It's like oh, like a Suicide Squad kind of thing, but in reverse. You know, mm. it's like all oh, the, the the worst people in the world put on a a planet to be hunted by these super predator aliens. Very, it's just a great pitch for a film. Very high concept. Very, just very. It's it, it kind of writes itself from there. Mm-hmm. And Adrian Brody does very well. as the as the, as the main guy, in my opinion. Yeah. What do you think? No. Yeah. No, I agree. I think Adrian Brody's a pretty good action <laughs> star. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. I just like the. I just love when I just love films that are just like here's like a bunch of stereotypes and uh, yeah they're like the <laughs> best at what they do and we're just gonna stick them together and they're gonna like, you got the Russian who carries the big the big gun the spitzness you got the the yakuza guy who takes out a samurai yeah, sword man. And- <laughs> the yakuza guy is just like the car you know the Simpsons where they. The, the accuser show to the that it's he's like, a little guy he's, gonna, he's, <laughs> just gonna, he's just standing there he hasn't said anything yet <laughs> he's literally that guy <laughs> I love the way that like he literally just does the same thing that the uh, Native American do- dude does in the first film oh. where he's just like he turns around he's like go I got this and it's literally like it is the exact same where Topher Grace's foot is fucked and he's being carried by to, uh, by um, Adrian Brody and the girl, which is the exact same in the OG film, or whoever that guy is, his leg is fucked yeah. and he's been carried by Arnie and the girl, and they're chasing off. And then the the last dude just takes out his sword and decides to fight the predator face to face, mano a mano, with a weapon. Except this guy's Asian, so he actually wins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, wins. He he kills the predator anyway. <laughs> ah, yeah, he gets there in the end. Um, but only to be fair, he had a, a samurai sword. Whereas the guy in the original film, he needed a machete. He's also on a log, so it's gonna be very difficult for him. Yeah, yeah. Well, the accuser trumps everything anyway. You know? Yeah. It's like what's what's this guy's backstory? You know, he's just like he's like, oh, I talk too much. He's lost his fingers <laughs> as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All the stare as like, yeah, the black guy, he's the IDF some, soldier. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's just. I don't know. And then Danny Trejo. It's just Danny Trejo. It's like a cartel enforcer. He was just like wearing normal clothes. <laughs> but his, his dual wheeling machine guns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's just a, he's just a, Mex- a random Mexican just, man. He's, like, he's, like, he's, like, he's not even the cartel. He's just a Mexican. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we got the Spetsnaz. We got, we got, uh, we got the, uh, the RAF. We got the IDF. We got the Mexican guy. <laughs> <laughs> Some Mexican dude. You ever seen that... Um, that um, Rubber Bandit song, uh, Oh, I Need a Black Man. Yeah, 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 It's yeah, literally yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the whole, the whole cast. Yeah, <laughs> it's very funny though. Yeah, it's like peak two thousands action films. You know, mm. just like that, just a concept, just done to a T. Yeah, and you got um, oh, what's his name? Um, the guy that's been there the entire time, and he's in the Matrix. Oh yeah, Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah, yeah, Lawrence Fishburne shows up and he's crazy. <laughs> yeah, he's lost a plot. Do you think he probably will be if he's been haunted for as long as he has? Yeah, like he just kind of shows up out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, I've been here for ages. I know how this shit works. Why? <laughs> <laughs> how? Just kill yourself. Man. <laughs> yeah. What's the that point? That's awful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the actual point. But no, good. All the same. Good film. Mm. Good film. No complaints from me. What was your favorite death in this one? Favorite death, um, hmm. There's no real solid kills in this one. I think this film was 15s as well, whereas Predator and Predator Two were 18s, 18s so they could yeah. get away with a lot more gore. Mm. Um, yeah, I actually remember this was 16s when it came out. Yeah, I think this film. I don't. I think that's a complaint that people had about this film is that it wasn't gory enough. Yeah. Which is like, yeah, fair, but there is. A, doesn't Lawrence Fishburne gets exploded into a red mist? Yeah, yeah, and like they like three people get impaled, <laughs> and like you see them get impaled. Yeah, and they're like, like they're alive. Oh rapids. yeah, the the and like fucking. I actually know you know what your man um the death row inmate. What's he, his name? Walter Goggins. Walter Goggins. That's his name. Is that his name? Walter Goggins. In the in the movie. No, in real life. Is it? His real name is Walter Goggins. Walter Goggins. Okay. He has a set of teeth I'll tell you that yeah yeah those are dentures surely yeah, no man I don't think those are real f- teeth are they yeah yeah they're huge yeah no he's got massive they teeth stick out of his skull mm. which by the way gets ripped out of his body oh yeah that's the best kill has to be said spi- oh. he just rips his spine out like I was thinking 
Would you be alive? Would you be alive? Would you be dead? I'm sure that you die. I'm fairly certain that all your spinal yeah. uh, nerves and stuff like your spinal column gets ripped out. I'm fairly certain. It's like plugging out a a computer from the back, like but, just straight away. But you know the way if if you know you, you get beheaded, like you're alive for like a second, maybe two seconds afterwards. I don't think you're alive for a second. You're alive for a little bit. You're alive for like I'm sure you'd be you're aware gonna... that your head's been cut off, then you're gone. Yeah. But like, would it be the same if someone rips out your spinal column and it's just your skull, but like your brain is still there and it's attached? It still has like you know maybe half a second of oxygen left. It's still somewhat aware. Like, but your eyes get ripped out as well, so you can't even see anything. Oh yeah, but you still be aware though. People who are blind can still are still aware. I suppose. Would you be briefly alive? I that, wonder. That terrified me when I was watching. Would what, what, what's your brain? Maybe for like a second, if it's quick enough. Mm. Like you, you'd have consciousness of the fact that what just happened to you. Jesus Christ! Just for like that's the l- worst <laughs> death. Oh you're, my god! That's obviously the best death. The your best last, death. your last conscious thought is my spine and brain <laughs> just got <laughs> ripped out of my body. My spine. <laughs> <laughs> that's your last. Because co- yeah, they thought. rip it out all in one go, so the skull and everything comes out. Yeah. So yeah. the brain is still in that skull. Yeah, that's what I was, I was like. Oh, that's that's awful. Yeah. But wow, that's much my favorite kill. It's awful though, Jesus. There's a, I like makes the, you think. There's a it bit makes of you think. That's, that's the best thing predators. Think. Makes you think. It makes you think. <laughs> it makes you think about the human body in ways yeah. that you never thought before. <laughs> yeah. I love like, like, like that's serious gore. Like there's a lot of like good dark comedy in it as well. I think that bit where like uh, Topher Grace, who we at that stage thinks is just this absolute geek, mm. and he's there with Walter Goggins, serial killer, and he's like talking about like how he wants to you know rape people and stuff like that, mm. and he's like. Yeah, man, cool. And he sits down by the Russian. The Russian's like, stay away from him. He's like, oh, yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. But no, it's solid. We're okay. So, what are, so at this stage, we are nearing the end of the Predator half of this franchise review. And then we'll get on to AVP films. Mm. Where are you ranking all these films now? In the Predators. So from top to bottom. What do you mean? Like so all, like all the of them entire. across aliens. So we have Alien, Aliens, Alien Three, Alien Resurrection, uh, oh, Prometheus okay. Covenant, Predator, Predator Two, Predators. It's eight films, nine films even. Alien, Prometheus, Predator, um, Predator Two, and Predators. Um, Alien Covenant, Alien Three, Alien Four. Where's Aliens in that? Oh shit! Uh, Aliens is just after. It's fourth, just fourth. after, just after Predator, in my book. Hmm. That's what I would do. I'm going. I'm going Alien, Predator, Prometheus, Aliens, Predator Two. Fuck what else is in this franchise? <laughs> uh Predator No, uh Predators mm. Covenant No, three Covenant and four. I think I did them all there. Yeah, that's You get the gist of it. It's we basically have the exact same list. Yeah, more or less. We, we, we swap Prometheus yeah. and Aliens. <laughs> and then they, so yeah, I think we got yeah. Cause like It's it's the objectively correct order. Because uh, yeah, some people might have uh Covenant uh ahead of three, because people really don't like three. Um, but oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I had that below. I had that below. I, I, I had three above Covenant. I don't mind three at all. Actually, no. Wait, I actually retract my statement. Three is actually better than Covenant. Yeah, no, I think it it's is. Not that bad. It's not that bad. It's not that good either. It's just not that good. I yeah. just Whereas it's Alien Covenant's bad. Alien Covenant's annoying as fuck. Yeah, it's not good. We go for a break. Let's go for a break. Way back in the day, I think it was episode one. Episode episode one, yeah. Episode one. Where it all started. We talked about the trailer to a mythic film of this podcast. Remember for a while, we considered putting one of the sound effects for this trailer as like as part of our intro. Yeah, because it sounded real good. It, it did sound really <laughs> it good. It, sounded, it, was, it was a really good trailer. It synced up real well as well. But yeah. Judas and the Black Messiah. Judas and Black Messiah. It's out. At, it's at long, <laughs> at long last, <laughs> for years this was paywalled. It was like you had to to, pay, to watch this film. You need to pay like eighteen euro, um, 
which is like no one, no one was gonna do that. I actually don't know. I've never had a conversation with about this film with anyone in real life, even though it won like multiple Oscars. Yeah, it's very well received. Mm -hmm. No one really talked about it, at least here anyway. Because it, it, it was like barely, it was really hard to find. Mm -hmm. um, legally, like. Um, no, I didn't want to watch it illegally. You wanted to support the film. I also wasn't arsed finding it. Also not arsed. There's enough shit yeah. on the streaming services. Yeah, I wasn't really <laughs> arsed. But eventually it is now out on Prime. That's available to watch. Um, if you have a Prime subscription. And I saw that and I was like, oh, I have to, I really want to watch this. But if, uh, I saw it like, uh, like weeks ago. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, it's kind of heavy. I don't want to watch it. 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 And then I was like, I was in a mood and I was like, I want to watch this film. Why are you in your mood, Mark? What did you do? Various, various reasons. So I was like, I want to watch this film. Because um, it's just really, it's an amazing story, you know. Um, incredible story. Fred Hampton, the, the Black Panther Party. Uh, Co-Intel Pro and, you know, FBI, domestic terrorism against black communities in America in the 60s. Um, and it's, yeah, it's Daniel Kaluuya won best supporting actor did for, he for this yeah yeah for p portraying fred hampton uh, in this in this film and like i can see why really really good performance really well directed all that shot you know like it's just it's just a really good it's well made yeah. movie you know um and the whole story is obviously in insane you know fred hampton's 21 he was killed at 21 years old he accomplished all these things at 21 years old and the, the film is like the film's quite long it's like two hours and a bit um but it's go through through like so many goes through so many episodes and there's like time skips and stuff. You're like, how the fuck was this guy 21 <laughs> when he died? Like at the end of the film. Yeah, yeah. Feels like he's, he would have been in his 30s. Um, he accomplished so much. But uh, yeah, the whole thing was he was a leader of the Black Panther Party in the like late 60s after MLK, after Malcolm X had been assassinated. They're all like kind of, they're, they're kind of like scrambling for uh, for leaders in the aftermath of all the civil rights what, uh, stuff. What city was he in? Chicago. Chicago, yeah. Chicago, yeah. Um, the city was crying out for a hero. But this wasn't Batman. <laughs> this is real life. So he needed to actually put in the work. And so he did. They had all these breakfast programs. Uh, the party program was like all, you know, kind of community work. Get, get, trying to like build a popular base. And it was all based on like Maoism. Mm -hmm. uh, which is obviously pretty con controversial. Uh, but the weird thing about this film, which we talked about in episode one, about how we kind of... There's obviously a lot of skepticism. Because this is basically a studio film. Yeah. How could this? How is? How could they really make a film about this? How could they make and, like a show what happened? Yeah, how can they make a film about a like a third world Maoist socialist revolutionary, um, without kind of like diluting, mm -hmm. um, not even like the message that Fred Hampton was trying to put out or the Black Panther Party, but like without like diluting like the, the basic like timeline of events and like how things played out. Uh, but this film, like weirdly enough, it's all. Like it, it is. It's like, all there. It's it's all there. Like I don't know. Like I don't know. I'm not a fucking historian on the period, but like, it's um. You got like, enough out of it. Yeah, no. But he's sitting there giving speeches, talking about Mao, and like how uh, they need to overthrow capitalism, mm -hmm. and the only way to do that is like there's like a progression from like, oh, we'll start with all these like community programs, and then you stop about like violence. Like, we need guns. We need to fight back. Like the police, um are terrorists against the community. Like, they're not on our side. They're not part of the community. Um, and the only way to defend against them is through revolutionary violence. Um, but he's not saying this in... Because like, there's not, like, mad shadows. Mm -hmm. And he's, like, throwing his arms around. It's like, the, the film is portraying is like, this guy is, like, totally reasonable. Mm -hmm. Like, this guy is, like, right. <laughs> like, <laughs> so what the hell is this? So weird. And it's, uh, it's very much kind of 50-50. Like, it was... And uh, Daniel Kaluuya and Lakeith Sanfield were both nominated for Best yeah. Supporting Actor. Because uh, they both, it's about 50 50 in terms of screen time. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel Kaluuya is Fred Hampton, like basically the main character, the subject of the story. Uh, the Black Messiah, as mentioned in the title. And then Lakeith Sanfield is Judas, is this guy called O'Neill something, um, who was a, a mole who was kind of like, uh, he was caught, he was done for, I think car robbery or something like that some kind of crime some kind of like non-violent crime i think and uh they brought him in they're like okay we need we're gonna we'll let you off on this if you infiltrate the black panther party and specifically go after this guy fred hampton because they're very afraid of it's an it's explained like totally in the film and um, they're afraid of fred hampton because um of the idea that he would be a black messiah as in someone who would be able to uh 
rally different ethnicities, you know, uh, the working class in general, like whites, Mm -hmm. Latinos, blacks, um, and the new left, which was just kind of like um, a separate kind of thing, which included like bourgeois, like students and people like the Weather Underground. um, Because the civil rights have been such like a popular mass movement. um, And someone like MLK or like Malcolm X would have been like the natural leader to progress beyond that. But obviously they were like coincidentally assassinated right at the time where they're like weirdly their highest popularity um, and there's like loads of clips of because uh, Fred Hampton's a big fan of Malcolm X and it's just like Malcolm X speech is just like kind of littered throughout the film mm-hmm. um, but yeah this guy um, who is played by Lakeith Stanfield he's, he's, he's put in there by uh, as a mole by the FBI uh, the FBI guy assigned to the case is played by uh, Jesse Plemons mm-hmm. who does oh, it yeah. plays it very 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 well God, I love Jesse Plemons. And it's, it's, again, it's not a case of like, ah, uh, he was just kind of, he's between a rock and a hard place. Um, he's just doing his job. It's mm-hmm. like, like, he's just evil. Like, yeah. <laughs> but not even that, like, he's like pure, like cartoonishly evil. It's like, it, it, it portrays the, the systems very well. And so it's like, obviously the, the title of the film, you have two characters, Judas, Black Messiah. Um, and then probably the third character is, uh, I think his name is Bill Mitchell or something. It's not, it's not Bill Mitchell. But it's it, the, the FBI agent is played by Jesse, Jesse Plemons. Um, so those are the three main characters. But you don't... It's not like a superhero film where like Fred Hampton's saving the community. There's a whole... He has a whole monologue in the film about how like this isn't about me. Uh, this is about the you know the people and like the party and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can see how he is like a product of um, like his environment and how the, the rat is a product of his circumstances mm-hmm. in terms of like he f- he's being forced into doing this pretty much um, and how the FBI agent um, sees himself as being the hero yeah but is like misled uh, or not misled he's just wrong pretty much yeah um, and they, 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 the way they portray that is just uh, it's like really well done for a Hollywood film because it is a Hollywood it's not like just some you know abstract independent film mm-hmm. it's, it's made by I think it's uh, funded by or p- distributed by 20th Century Fox or something like that one mm-hmm. of them um, but the way it's done is all it's very very good and obviously the whole story is is, is insanely depressing it's so it's a frustrating story very fr- yeah very frustrating <laughs> story to say the least um, it's well acted it's well done Um it just, it's just, yeah, it's, it's obviously, it's quite depressing. It's but the, the way it's, it's, it's done, the, the story is just kind of, it's still satisfying as well. It, it doesn't, it's not like kind of it closes the book at the end. It's more like, uh, you just kind of feel mad at the end of the film pretty much. Yeah, yeah. You know, which is good because that's what. That's what you want. That's what, yeah, that's what he would want. And that's what his family would want. And they're kind of included. Because um, the whole thing was the, the, uh, the rat was like, you know, um, injected into the party. He got close to Fred Hampton. Um, gained his trust stuff like that after a few years um, not even he, he'd kind of lost the influence a little bit because they got him in, they got him on some like uh, bullshit charges and sent him to, to prison mm-hmm. and then when he came out it's when he came out and he had like he, I think he had he had a son and he had I don't know he had, his wife was like eight months pregnant pregnant at the time and they sent in these uh, Mercenaries, but or they were police, but they were like plain clothes. Mm-hmm. And they sent him into his apartment and like shot him. Yeah, uh, after in his bed. The, after the rat had drugged him, and his pregnant wife was like in the room, and they show the entire thing. Like it's you're you're there in the room with them when the whole thing's going on. You can feel the confusion, and like uh, like the horror of it all, mm. and the brutality of the way they do it. Because <clears throat> uh, his wife and his son actually served as like uh, uh, consultants on the film as well. Mm-hmm. So it's all. You know, quite accurate to the, to like the smallest details, like to the you know, gruesomely, like inconveniently gruesome details, um, and then like twelve days after he was shot, his son was born. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fred Hampton Jr. who's actually still active, I think, in the Black Black Panther Party, and then they have like this w- this this news reel at the end, um, which is like showing the interview with the the guy who was the rat, mm-hmm. like years after. He saw me. I was like, yeah, I, I don't regret what I did, um. It's like, and they asked the interviewer asked him was like, "How would you explain it? if your son asked you what you did? How would you explain it?" He was like, "I'll just say I was an active member in the Black Panther Party. I, I didn't just sit in the the armchair kind of revolutionary. I was there out in the streets. I was I was there doing 
like what needed to be done. I was there putting in the work. I was there helping the community. Uh, and then he like cuts it black. Um, as like the the night that this interview was broadcast, he killed himself. He ran out from a car and like committed suicide. I didn't know that. That's that's crazy. Like, but I didn't it just know that. it shows like the mythos behind it. It's just like um so depressing. It's biblical. Like that <laughs> yeah, is straight up like biblical. Yeah, it is yeah, biblical. Yeah, like yeah. um it's an incredible story, which maybe isn't as known as it should be in like the popular imagination. Well, that's what you got Just films like this. This one was huge when it came out, sir. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So um, more people knew about it. Yeah, it's just such like a, a like a lyrical tragedy, you know? Mm. Like even like that that little detail at the end of the film, I didn't know about it at all. Yeah. Well like it really like it's like it's like really morbid capstone yeah yeah on this like horrific tale It'll probably be talking about for like hundreds of years afterwards you know and mm. uh, like something that people look back look back on uh pretty more so than they do now you know maybe with a bit more a few more decades or a century of hindsight you know yeah and you know more stories about what fucked up shit america's done yeah to yeah keep. what's what's not declassified <clears throat> right now you know or what's still classified because uh, yeah it only came out like a long time afterwards it only came out that he was the rat, I think, in, like, the 80s. And uh, then COINTELPRO, like, the whole program, which specifically targeted black communities um, and different kind of organizations like the Black Panther Party, mm. um, which the the FBI used to target those those organizations. That only came out well after, obviously. Um, but obviously, like, those things are still still active, you know? Yeah. They, would, they, they wouldn't say they are, but obviously they definitely there's, are. There's some version of them. There's, not, there's no way they just stop doing that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? There's no fucking way. Like, it worked. They're not going to be like, oh, actually, that was actually kind of bad out. Let's, yeah, let's not do that again. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't do that. I mean, no. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's obviously still going on. Uh, makes you think. Makes you think, man. Yeah. It's fucked up. It's a great film. I encourage, I'll every, I encourage everyone to watch it. I'll definitely give it a, give it a go. You really should. It's, yeah, no, it's I should. really good. Really good. I, I it's just like it's a film that I missed when it came out. Um, Same. So it was just it was like what was it? Raccoon was like eighteen euro. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Like I'm sorry, no. And I'm not, Fred Hampton's I, rolling in his fucking grave. Eighteen euro. <laughs> it's a film for the people, no. <laughs> <laughs> this film should be immediately on, uh, you know, it should be on internet archives. Should be on, yeah, it should be on fucking Vimeo or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. But I definitely. It's also like a film that I kind of forgot about. Because mm. people don't really talk about it that much. But yeah, exactly. At yeah. the time, people were like, this story's fucking crazy. Insane um, story, yeah. But yeah, no, I definitely have to remember to fucking stop watching Star Wars, not some Jews <laughs> <in> the <Bible laughs> <side>. Yeah, <laughs> this is such a tonal shift. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it, it moves on nicely to it our does. recommended film of the episode. We are going to be discussing Daisies again. Daisy. 1966. Daisy. Directed by, <sighs> do you want to try and pronounce that Czech name? Ivan Alinovich, Vera Chitilova. Vera Chitilova. Two teenage girls, both named Marie, decide that since the world is spoiled, they will be spoiled as well. Accor- accordingly, they embark on a series of destructive pranks in which they consume and destroy the world about them. This freewheeling madcap feminist farce was immediately banned by the government. I don't know why that's good. What's that to do with the film? <laughs> why is that in the synopsis? No idea. <laughs> Speaks to sound cooler. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Yeah. Immediately, but this was produced by the government. Yeah, as well. I know. Yeah. They're like, this is, actually, this they're like, wait a second. Wait a second. Do like this? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of like this is kind of like um, on Silver Globe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was to say, fucking communist. <laughs> the commies, the commies, man. What were they thinking? <laughs> Yeah, no, this is this is a very this is a very stimulating film. Mm, highly stimulating. The eyes are constantly caressed by beautiful imagery throughout this film. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, montages of just like flurries of images and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, the playfulness, the playfulness. Not just well, no, yeah, obviously it's 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 totally related to the characters themselves. Mm-hmm. The playfulness of the camera and like the actual direction as well. And then, you know, the two Maries they're just like these playful little sprites. But like they're just, it's all an act. Mm-hmm. It's all an act. It's like performative femininity in a patriarchal world. And they're tearing down, they're exposing the surrealism. They're exposing under the real. They're pulling back the layers of patriarchy, the layers of kind of, of the of the fake world around them. 
through their own theatrics. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, I don't know. Cause, yeah, I was my main thing after I finished this film was like, fuck, I don't know how I'm gonna structure a conversation about this film. It's very yeah, it's very like loose. It, very not, loose. And like everything is tied together. Like the aesthetics of the film are directly tied to the thematics of the film, which is directly tied to like the narrative structure of the film, which mm. is directly tied to the like historical and political context in which this film came out of. Uh, everything is woven together in this film in such a way that like it's hard to dis to like section it off because it's just a it's it's like it's basically a collage of all these things together. Um, and it's 75 minutes long, which doesn't add to the fact that there's like not a lot of film to talk about. Mm. Um, but I really like this film. I also really liked it. I really, really liked this film. Yeah. I thought it was, it's been a while. I've been thinking of like, it was like, it's been ages since I watched a film that like, I really like for the first time that I like really loved and like a film that like, I know I'm going to be like thinking about. I'm gonna be thinking about this film constantly. Like, just, like, just I'm gonna get just imagery of this film. I'll just, I wake up in a cold sweat with imagery from this film, just like shining in my face. Yeah, yeah. Um, very vibrant. Very vibrant film. It's on YouTube as well. It's on YouTube. Totally I was watching a fucking. High uh, quality. I didn't know this was on YouTube, and I was watching a fucking uh, a stream of it, and the the subtitles were out of sync. Yeah. And I was like, for fuck's sake! So then I tried to find another one. And then just YouTube popped up, and I was like, "What?" And I clicked onto it. I was like, the captions weren't exact translations mm. because famously the film ends with saying that this film is dedicated to the those who get angry or whatever the exact term was. Get angry over uh, stomped lettuce. Yeah. But the version I watched said uh, "ruined trifle," and I was like, "That is just not." I know for a fact that's the wrong translation. Ruined trifle. Because. It's meant to be stamped lettuce. Like, that is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what it's meant to be. Um, yeah. Um, what does that even mean, though? I, it's, it's absurd. It's surrealist. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> well, um, it's random. There's, like... Because this film is so many different things. It's, like, that feminist farce that you were talking about. It's also, like, just a piss take of um, the leaders of communism just eating consuming everything around them uh, at the time like just like how the soviet union was a complete fucking farce and wasn't what it was meant to be um like the two the two women just essentially like at the start they're um it's really cool like everything with this film is so cool like they the, the two women are sitting sitting down and they move their head but there's like a creaking noise every time that they move so they're like uh, dolls, dolls, mm. and then they're just like, "The world's a messed up place, so why don't we be messed up too?" Mm. And uh, then from there, they just start literally just eating everything. <laughs> like, there's so much food eaten in this film. Yeah, there'd be a big, big food fight. It's like a ten minute food fight at the end of the film. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like over ten percent of the film. <laughs> <laughs> literally. Yeah, 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 but yeah, it's a lot of uh, they're they're. Uh, they're allowing their, like, not carnal. They're allowing their, like, you know, basic desires to lead them. Mm -hmm. is Hedonistic the, tendencies. Yes, yes, yes. The hedonism, hedonism. Rather than uh, kind of, like, submit to the strictures of the ordered society from which they were born, you know? Um, which is, like, you know, see, I don't think, I, like, I, again, this is, like, the same as on the Silver Globe. I'm not sure how this, how does this really relate to, like, communism anymore yeah, than just no, yeah. any other government you know Author authoritarianism definitely yeah it's, it's like a hippie film mm -hmm. it was made in Czechoslovakia which I can understand is like obviously well, the only received very differently the fact yeah. it's made by the government as well very different from like an independent like fucking Andy Warhol film in the, in the states you know mm -hmm. um, but yeah it's, it's a proper it's a it's a hippie like if, if, if this if this was in English you I wouldn't think about it I wouldn't be like this is a mad Eastern European film you know mm -hmm. it's just uh it just happens to be made in Czechoslovakia. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's really good. It's really, it's really worth a watch. It's, it's nice and short as well, you know? It's so short, <laughs> I've yeah. never heard of it. Never heard yeah, of no, it. my sister told me about it. Oh, really? Yeah, because her friend watched it, and she's like, oh, Daisy's is real good. I'm doing shorts, and I watched it. Mm. And then she was watching um, 
some video, some video essay that was about a Greta Gerwig film. And they rec- they, they're like, oh yeah, she did this uh, different color changes, which is from Daisies. And I was like, oh, I've seen that film. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Because the film does that. It's like so, like it messes with color constantly throughout the film. Like some of it is in black and white and then it'll switch to like vibrant color, like just, you know, color. And then it will switch to like uh sepia tone and fucking like just green red blue just color like filters over it and uh, sometimes it's like constantly changing within the one scene Um, you have like these like flurry flashes of like whatever is going on within the scene so in one scene they're in a room with um a bunch of um butterflies stuck on the wall yeah. and it just const like every couple of seconds there's flurries of butterflies on the screen um, and then another there's like loads of apples and stuff like that mm. um, that's one thing and like it happens so much throughout the film that like your brain just starts associating like just symbols on screen so there's those like eating apples and you're like oh yeah like you know Garden of Eden like apples of desire mm. knowledge all that type of shit slicing up bananas that was a good one. Yeah, yeah. They're there, like <laughs> cooking some dude, and she just cuts open a, a banana and she starts. She doesn't even eat it. She's just chopping a banana in half. Just chopping it up, yeah, yeah. Phallic objects. Um, yeah, it's one of those films. Where it's like it's a surrealist film, but like it's not like you have to. Fu- you have like a, a, a degree in like abstract art. Huh. To understand, like you can just it's one that you can just relax and like. The f- the film grammar will make sense mm-hmm. if you just let it soak into your eyes. Yeah, that yeah. That kind of way, you know. Like it's just it's all there. The si- the symbolism is all there, and the, the dialogue isn't really that important. Uh, it's all a very visual film, um, and the symbolism is all there, very immediate, very um, not on the nose, but like the montage, the associations that are made, um, like it's all designed. That's the whole point of surrealism. Mm-hmm. It's like it's it's putting the messages there in your head, whether you pick it up immediately or not. Um, it's the kind of thing you can sit on and think about later, um, and you pick up more things, um, and you get like more. You get a feel for the film, regardless of how much necessarily you're like engaged or kind of maybe even enjoying it in the moment. Mm-hmm. It's like you just it's a vibe. Yeah, it's a to, vibe. To use a cliche, <laughs> it's a vibe <laughs> on this podcast. Yeah, yeah. It is. It is a uh, surrealism. But that's 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 what surrealism is, though. You know, it's not necessarily. It's 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 the spirit of what the girls are kind of embodying as well. The, the the whole surrealist kind of idea of surrealism, mm-hmm. you know, there's no structured kind of uh, this is how you do it, do what I say kind yeah, of. It's like yeah, yeah. A B C, um, it's all jumbled up, um, and it's all kind of just free flowing, following the path of least resistance, um, and creating some kind of meaning out of the disorder. Yeah, because it's like and finding the meaning in the disorder. Because like quite clearly, like the characters have control over the film like they'll just constantly like just switch between scenes and stuff like that like there's loads of really cool cuts where like they'll i think there's a bit where like someone f- where they fall mm. and then they just land in water because they 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 have control over the scenes that they are in mm. and will just move whatever way they want to move and um, really cool scene where they have a scissors fight and they're chopping up that like one character cuts off the other's arm and her arm is separate to her and it's just like freely moving and then they just start like attacking each other with scissors but the footage that you're seeing is all chopped up and jumbled around but the characters are still moving within the little pieces Mm. and I thought I've never seen that before it was sick I thought it was so cool the use of collage is really uh, it's not it's not something I remember seeing in any other film no no it's very well done I like I've never I have never seen a film do the shit that's in this film. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, and it's like constantly doing that. Like mm. it's every couple of minutes you'll see something that's like I've never seen a film do that before. Yeah, it's like it's like a lucid dream. Yeah, you know, it's um, it's kind of like um, what's that guy Dreamwork? And he has that other one. You showed me that before. Where he's me- he's messing with the actual film itself. Uh, Stan Bricage. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like, some of it reminded me of that. Like, this film clearly influenced, like, a bunch of shit. Mm. Like, a bunch of, like, there's definitely, like, Lynch and stuff like that have been influenced by this film. Ah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And, like, other weird old fucking directors that, like, mess with film mm. have clearly been influenced by this. Because um, it just does 
so much that there's definitely something that you'll see him like that's cool <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah and not in like an l l was it l mora la mora mm. kind of way not to I've, i think i've referenced la mora every single time since, since we've, we've, we had that film you've never gotten over that film <laughs> i haven't gotten over that film <laughs> i was like oh there's a few interesting images but it's like it's like interesting images you see in a film in a book about films I'm like that, that, that film looks kind of cool this is a this is a, a interesting imagery in the film as you're watching it and you're like that's kind of it'll stick with you mm-hmm. you know like right now, you can just like picture like three different four, three four different sequences or um, snapshots. Yeah, that kind of just stick out, and you're like, "Ooh, that was kind of interesting. That was kind of cool." And then the great thing about surrealism, uh, remember other things tomorrow, and be like, "Oh yeah, yeah," because it's like almost subconscious. Yeah, the way you're yeah. processing the film. Yeah, because even now that we're talking, I'm like, "Oh yeah, remember they were eating the foods." Like with the guy, because there's like there's no real plot throughout the film. Mm. Like the film itself is a collage of scenes just stuck together. Mm. Um, but the one narrative that we have going through is just these two girls being like, we can just do whatever we want. Uh, we're not going to conform to what society wants us to do. We're not going to conform to what even this film's structure wants us to do. Yeah, we're going to yeah. do whatever we want to do. Um, and that's essentially what the filmmaker himself is saying. It's like, I'm going to fun about the girl, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want to do with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't go very well. But... No, uh, it's hilarious that the the government like this film promotes hedonistic tendencies and uh, promotes people to act as individuals which is not what we want as a collective (laughs) 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 but like it's not that either like they get their comeuppance at the end with like how they they eventually work their way up to like this banquet and they just they eat all the food there's so much food that they eat and then they have a food fight but then they realize kind of what they've done that there's no there's no uh, there's nowhere to go once you've reached the top essentially of yeah. of hedonism, uh, and it's like just gonna go nowhere. Gonna go nowhere and tries to put it back together, but it doesn't work. And they're like, we're having fun, right? And it's like, yeah, definitely. And it's like, we're not we're not playing a game, are we? We're not messing. Like this is real. It's like, no, yeah, definitely. And they die. <laughs> that's, that's what I don't, I don't really get. Like, what? Why were they? What was their problem with the film? Like, no it's idea. It's kind of like yeah, they were they had their big, you know, big day out. And then, like, they're like, oh, no, that was kind of pointless. Yeah, it's like, that led to nothing. That was not fulfilling whatsoever. Yeah. It's like On the Silver... It's the same as On the Silver Globe. Yeah. Um, on the Silver Globe, I... Because even when I'm watching On the Silver Globe, I'm like, I don't even know what this has anything to do with communism. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand how Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, it's like, any film that's made in that, that area before 1990, it's like, this is a critique of communism. Is everything... Or, like, this was a propaganda film. It's like, not everything has to do with the government. Like, yeah. Sometimes they just make it's not films. About, it's not about you, bro. Yeah, it's not everything is about this. <laughs> Sometimes they just make a movie. It's like Predators. So this is a critique of uh, the American bill. It's just a movie about aliens. It's just a movie about aliens. Sometimes, or is it? Sometimes it is just a movie about aliens. <laughs> Sometimes it is, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think it was like someone, I think James Cameron or someone said that about ali- aliens. It's like, Sometimes you just make a movie about aliens, okay? It's got nothing to do with Vietnam. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um... But you know, yeah, I just I the best thing about this film is like I will rewatch this quite a bit because it's only seventy minutes long, and it's just like I feel like it's a film that like you'll appreciate repeatedly on on watches. Mm, yeah, yeah, like the um the what's the word I'm looking for? The good qualities of this film essentially won't diminish from rewatch. Mm. It's not like when you're watching a film and you know what's gonna happen, so you know sometimes it's not as good. Yeah, yeah no, it's a good. Uh... It's a good sounds sounds uh sounds trite. It's a good mood piece. It is a good mood piece. If you have you have an art showing, and you're bringing all your art school friends, you put this you project this onto the wall on your blank, white wall in your apartment, while you're doing your art show, and it kind of makes it makes it's like it works. Mm-hmm. You know that kind of way. It's like it does. Is, it's like you can be part of the furniture. You can just kind of you can you can. <laughs> it's a surrealist film you can have on the background here. You know? <laughs> it kind of is though. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. there's bits where like I wasn't giving it my full attention, kind of on my phone, and then I look up and I'm like, ah, oh, it's fucking. And then it would immediately draw me back into the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's just bits where like, there's like um, they like dance around like a, a ball or something like that. I wasn't really watching that much, <laughs> and then I looked up, and then they were like um, having f- dinner with a dude and like swindling him to just so he could buy them more food. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, that's, that's funny, that's cool. And then I'm pretty sure one stage were invisible as well to everyone that's around them. Yeah, yeah, because that, that that was the beginning of their their downfall. They're like, 
without our without attention what we're going to do without our attention you know uh, yeah but no one yeah they, because it comes about existential at some stage when they're having a milk bath yeah the milk oh man that, that looked amazing mm, a it's milk amazing bath. for your skin <laughs> what's your opinion on milk um, I don't really drink milk, like even regular milk and no. tea. I use oat milk mostly because okay. my skin used to really react to it. I think you're lactose uh, tolerant. No, no, it's just like I used to get like mad pimples and stuff like that, uh, bad acne. Yeah, just um, the fat, yeah. So um, that was also just a teenager, so it could have just been acne. Mm. But uh, one of the things I cut out was milk. Just try it, and my skin let off a good bit. Yeah, when I did that. So I don't really have much milk in my diet. I'm a big milk man. I'm a big chocolate milk guy. I love chocolate milk. Oh, oh yeah, lovely. What's your thoughts on strawberry milk? I've never had strawberry milk. Strawberry milk is pretty good from what I remember. I haven't had is it. Is like a yop? No, fuck yop. But man, I think yops are shit. I don't like yops. I don't I like yops. I yop. never liked yops. I, I hate, I hate when, uh, ever had a, a yop thrown at you? <laughs> It just, it just get everywhere. It would, it, would, it would literally ruin my day. Is yop a milk or is it yogurt? I think it's a, it's a combination <laughs> of both. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. <laughs> it's yeah, it's because it's a liquid as well. It's a, it's a liquid. It's kind of like Actimel, I think. Yeah, but Actimel is yeah. actually nice. Uh, they're pretty the same thing. What the fuck is yop? <laughs> what is a yop? <laughs> what is a yop? Um, yeah. Strangely like, enough, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I hate it, would, it would never be a muju because no one ever, no one ever <laughs> throw a, mu- a muju at you because it's too valuable. Yeah. But yeah, people just took that yeah, all the time. You just get fucking. You be you be walking up to the yard, you get fucking yop milled at your head. Yeah, yop. <laughs> you get yop. <laughs> yeah, said, drinking yogurt. Yeah, it is a yogurt. It's drinking yogurt. Okay. That's fucking disgusting. That is, drinking yogurt. That is rotten. Is yop yogurt drink good for you? No. Jesus, no. <laughs> what is yup made out of? Partially skimmed milk, water, sugar, milk protein, bacterial culture. Yeah, it's like an active milk. Ah, uh, right. Um, yeah, I didn't. I didn't like. I didn't even like how it smelled. But I liked. I liked active milk. I really liked active Man, milk. I like that's something that I, I would heavily judge cons that would come in drinking yup. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to say that. I'm like. Like, you, you drinking yop? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> is everything alright at home? Just take a fucking Actimel. Yeah, yeah. Yop. Or just drink Muju. Like one or the other. Don't drink yop. <laughs> yop is too sweet as well. Yeah, no, yop is rotten. Oh, it's because it's strawberry flavored. Oh, right. Strawberry milk. Well, wait, what's your opinion on strawberry milk? I, I like Muju. Okay. I like strawberry Muju from what yeah. I remember. Um, I haven't had it in fucking years. Um, I suppose maybe act- that's what act- I'll do tomorrow. Actimel is a strawberry milk, isn't it? Type of yogurt, drinking yogurt. Yeah. So I really like Actimels. I'm gonna get myself a Muju tomorrow. I'm gonna get myself a strawberry Muju in the Tesco beside work, and I will. I'll report back in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do nothing for the next two weeks. Guys, <laughs> 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 the Yop Muju wars continue. <laughs> <laughs> oh god Deary me Deary me Yeah no um, That's something I haven't thought I forgot about Yops Jesus Christ Yeah Jesus That's some serious uh, Some serious Primary school, school lore Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there. yeah. <laughs> Think as well When milk gets chucked at you well, You're fucked like, You're gonna yeah. stink You're afterwards. done for the rest of the day Yeah you're, you're f- done Just go home Yeah you just, you just wanna go home Like you're just like Fuck this I, don't I can just I'm, I'm imagining Just the, the very Distinct Smell Of a school jumper yeah, slightly hit with milk. We're having the exact same thoughts. Yeah, right now. <laughs> this is so yeah. This the hint is like slightly damp. It's just the, there's just a kind of a, a bang of milk yeah. off this guy. So you can tell when someone got yopped as well. Like chap behind you or chap chap beside you got yopped. It's like, oh Jesus, Rob Carr, stay away from me. <laughs> 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 it was a brutal crime. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was just bad out. Uh, never yop someone. Never yop someone. <laughs> never ever yop someone. <laughs> oh god. But uh, no daisies. Yeah. <laughs> um, daisies is just you know, it's just girls just want to have fun. That's what the movie is. <laughs> yeah. Check the subtitle. That's <laughs> daisies. <laughs> girls just want to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's the the moral of the story. Yeah. <laughs> that's the, the extent of our analysis. Girls just want to have fun. Oh uh, yeah. No, yeah, but the, when they're in the milk bath, um, fuck, what were we talking about? Talking about, talking about the milk bath. Milk bath, but they were talking about. Uh, oh no, it got some out existential. Because mm. they started talking about like um, 
one of them doesn't work or something like that. I can't remember exactly. Yeah. It's one of them doesn't work. She's undocumented. And and like, she's, yeah, there's yeah. no proof that you exist. Like, how can you prove that you exist? Imagine like, saying that to someone. <laughs> yeah, I was what just, the, what the fuck? fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Prove you exist. Like, you're speaking to me. Yeah, it's like, I'm right here. <laughs> it's like, you're the only thing that proves that I exist. But that's like, oh, God, I think that's just like, that's just such a, like, how do I know right now that I exist is the fact that I have you in front of me. But what if when I'm, when I'm alone? Do I know that I exist then? Do I know that other people know that I exist? <laughs> <laughs> just a solo podcast, just on. <laughs> is anyone out there? <laughs> God, imagine doing a solo. Man, I always think like, how the fuck does people like Blind Boy do solo podcasts? So, yeah, yeah, it must be strange. Like, you can't ramble at all, really, can you? Oh, that's that's, what, that's, that's can, what his yeah. podcast is. He can't, yeah. He's structured rambles, though. Structured rambles, yeah. Imagine me sitting here talking about fucking Star Wars for 30 minutes. I wouldn't be able to do it but just by myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like, oh. Anyway. So I was like, oh, Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why well, was the crack of him? <laughs> anyway. There'd be no discussions about yop. Yeah, we need yeah more yop based discussions. Imagine, imagine the smell when they're in that milk tub. Man, it's because like at one stage they uh they don't use a lot of milk though. There's a lot of water. There's a serious. I could tell. I was like, that's not real milk. That's, that's not, not. That's not pure. That's that's <laughs> that's, that's, that's pure seriously milk. skimmed. <laughs> seriously skimmed. It was like just the the the, the fluid dynamics. It was like that's not real milk. <laughs> Fake. The fluid dynamics. Fake. I know what you mean though. Yeah. Um, was I telling you that the um during the barista course, the guy. Ah, this barista course is the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> Sometimes it, during the week, I was just thinking about it. Like, it's like some of the things you said, I just start laughing at work. <laughs> it's like the the the, the shittest barista in, in Istanbul, and like uh, <laughs> the, the the dad with the fucking full barista, like coffee machine. It's just here for fun. <laughs> not making a cappuccino for the Fed. <laughs> You're not here for the yard of this. <laughs> oh no <laughs> the guy was going through all the different type of milks <laughs> he was like uh, yeah he, he's like, yup. he's like, yup. 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 he's like you yup he started going like uh, he started really, really passionately he started going about skimmed milk isn't milk it's just fucking water is essentially what he said yeah he's not wrong he's not wrong he's like there's no fat there's no nothing there's nothing milk about it <laughs> <laughs> just white <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, dear but uh, no yeah it seriously skimmed milk in that in that bath and man they start drinking it what's it was like oh, dirt mm. dirt yeah are you, I'm pretty sure uh, milk baths are meant to be very good for your skin though I imagine what much that would cost <laughs> <laughs> how many liters is a bath take? <laughs> you have nothing else <laughs> I got nothing else but this bath of milk. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even do anything with the milk afterwards because you're fucking balls and asshole yeah. have been in it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Odie, I can't pay the heating bill. So you spent the budget, the weekly budget on fucking gallons of milk. <laughs> no, you can't drink it. <laughs> I really advise against drinking it. Oh. Oh, Jesus. It's just a big fucking tub of milk with pubes is fucking shite. Oh, bro, that thing's gone in two, in like, yeah. three, oh, man, imagine the smell of that after two days. Just reuse it. Well, yeah, why are you reusing <laughs> the milk baths? <laughs> <laughs> but they're heating the bath as well in this. Yeah. That milk is going to go curdled they, quick. They light a fire and all, yeah, yeah. Oh, how long does it take for milk? Th- Wait, milk who's th- having milk baths? <laughs> <laughs> the rich. <laughs> Oh, I feel like milk bad. baths are a thing. Let me look yeah. it up. Milk baths. I'd say they are good for your skin, yeah. I say it is. A lot, <laughs> of, a lot of lipids and proteins. Milk milk baths is a thing. A milk bath is simply a bath that you add milk to. <laughs> oh, no, so it's not. <laughs> so it's actually a lot cheaper than we're going for. <laughs> and it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I should have looked this up beforehand. <laughs> I should do it a year on this. <laughs> I can't eat for a week now. <laughs> <laughs> but you not powdered milk, so maybe that's is powdered milk cheaper? I don't know. Uh, f- <laughs> Who's buying powdered milk? <laughs> 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 Fucking preppers. 
<laughs> oh. Powdered milk. Give me milk. Uh, go powdered milk. You have to add water. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh, God. Aren't you sweating after laughing? <laughs> they help to clear your dry skin. I'll get this good now. Oh, fuck. Right. Anyway. Do we have any listener questions? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> 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 Good, I don't want any. Yeah, no. Oh, no. fucking hell. No, we, we, we had a few few listener questions sent in, but we're going to have to leave them for next week. You know, fuck that. Um, oh, God, it's, it's getting late. So, uh, yeah, for a recommended film for episode 112 is The Discreet Charm of the Bourgeoisie. We have not watched that film, have oh, we? No, we have not. I've never even heard of that film. It's uh, by Luis Buñuel. It's a realist. Follows on, Sick. Follows on thematically from Daisies. It's also... Mathematically, very similar length. How long are we talking? It's like 90 minutes. Perfect. Surrealist <coughs> collage. And uh, you know yourself. Louis Budwell. Standard what? stuff. He's Where's the guy who did the fucking the thing with the eye. You know the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We should stop with that film as well. I don't want to watch that film again. Sorry, yeah, I'll skip know. that one thing. I tell, yeah, no, man, that film is 20 minutes long. I've never watched the past like, <laughs> seven in America. <laughs> Yeah, it was a Steve showed it to us. Was it yeah, sorry, I thought we were counting the Steve. I was like, who the fuck did he <laughs> show us that? <laughs> One of those mad DMT trips. <laughs> went to the Black Dog, went back to the Gaff. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Where are the lesbians, that Steve? It's <laughs> one of the funniest things ever. Where are the lesbians? <laughs> oh, God. The Steve Bannon, fucking... Oh God. Just to give context to to the listener, mm. um, uh, one of our college lectures we were watching uh, Orange is the New Black. Brent is. Uh, oh no, sorry. Go and uh, yeah. for uh, our lecture was like trying to get us to analyze the scene. She was like, "Where are the whatever? Where is this? Where is that? Where are the lesbians?" And the room was silent because <laughs> <laughs> I think it was trying to not laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Where are the lesbians? <laughs> they, they were in the shower. <laughs> he, he, he was. He was a great, great teacher. Great I have to teacher. Say. A really great teacher. Oh God, I love you, Steve. He was American, <sighs> of Ann Arbor University. <laughs> he was he like, had the, he had the world. Yeah, he, he had was the, DCU's Werner Herzog. <laughs> he actually was. Yeah, he, he had the fucking Guinness World Record for biggest fupa of all time. <laughs> We're walking around with that thing. <laughs> Got a mind of its own. <laughs> great guy, though. Great guy. Great teacher. Where are the lesbians? Where are the... <laughs> Iconic. Iconic. Nothing better. Steve. Oh. Anyway. Um, but we'll yeah. leave it at that. We'll leave it there for this week. We will talk to you all in two weeks' time. You will not be talking to us, but we'll be talking we'll to you. We'll be talking to you. Feel free to drop a comment, though. Drop a comment. Like. Subscribe if you're on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> subscribe to our Patreon. <laughs> This episode was brought to you by Yop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bit of, bit of, bit of, bit of, bit of, bit of, bit of. For all your product calcium, placement. For all your calcium needs, drink Yop. Drink Yop, yeah. Forget get milk. Yopped. Get, <laughs> get Yopped. Drink Yop or be Yopped. It's <laughs> <laughs> really intimidating. <laughs> like someone's standing over it's you with a Yop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Drink Yop or get Yopped. What's the Yop? Okay, we're going to leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> we just keep going on with this. The Yop Lord. Oh, right. Okay, thank you for listening. Goodbye. Bye.